We're looking again at the Acts of the Apostles and uh, chapter 9, this tremendous chapter that records for us the conversion of Saul of Tarsus. We read from verse 1 of chapter 9. And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound to Jerusalem and as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they laid him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. We know from the scriptures that Saul's father was a Roman citizen. Uh, he was brought up in the city of Tarsus as a devout Jew and from a devout Jewish home. Now we know this from Philippines chapter 3. And in chapter 3 we read there that he was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew. Uh, of the Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee concerning zeal persecuting the church touching the righteousness which is of the law blameless we know that the law required that a boy child uh, born into a Jewish home had to be circumcised on the eighth day and uh, Paul Saul's uh, parents uh, were very diligent in uh, bringing him right at the very time that the law required to be circumcised. Uh, he was of the tribe of Benjamin. A lot of the Jews didn't know which tribe they belonged to, but all knew uh, there was a diligence and a, in a sense perhaps a, a, an honour to be brought up in the tribe from the tribe from which the Israel had his first king. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. His father was a Hebrew. Uh, they weren't proselytes. They weren't uh, Gentiles that had uh, turned uh, to uh, the, the God of Israel. Uh, they were proselytes. Uh, he was a Pharisee and the Pharisees were the strictest of all of the, the Jewish sect. He was concerning zeal uh, he was seeking to stamp out every false teaching and he considered uh, the Christians and the church uh, as to be totally false and he wanted to, to wipe out that uh, in his own mind and in his own conscience he thought he was doing everything right uh, he had uh, a clear conscience as far as he was concerned he was faultless uh, there was nothing wrong. He had learned uh, trade as he was growing up uh, as a tent maker. But at some stage he went to Jerusalem uh, where he was taught at the feet of Gamaliel. Uh, Gamaliel was uh, one of the greatest of the, the teachers. And uh, they, they claimed that the law was beautiful, uh, more beautiful than uh, so when one is taught through the eyes of and the, the heart of uh, Gamaliel, he had this influence and he established himself 
as a very zealous uh, young man. Uh, we, we find his name first mentioned when it comes to uh, the persecution of the church. And uh, it says they, they put their feet, uh, they cast their, their clothes at the feet of a young man called Saul, who had uh, the stoning of Stephen. It wasn't just the fact that he was a young man and they just threw their coats down, but he was there overseeing and he was supervising and consenting to the death of Stephen, even though he was only a young man. The scripture tells us that Saul, breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. Uh, every breath that he breathed uh, was uh, filled with, with his rage against those who he saw as uh, perverting uh, the, the, the true religion of his fathers. Uh, he was one who uh, uh, was, was totally zealous, uh, seeking to, to stamp out. Uh, it shows us and it teaches us uh, that, that someone can be sincere and yet sincerely wrong. I can remember uh, someone saying to me just very shortly after I was converted, is Eric, the way to heaven is paved with good intentions. Now, I wasn't wise enough and uh, wasn't uh, to realize how false that statement was. And I often regretted afterwards that I didn't uh, point out that it was actually the road to hell that is paved with good intentions. Uh, we recognize that uh, uh, Paul was uh, a very sincere uh, and uh, uh, genuinely sincere person and yet he was totally wrong as we can see from the scriptures the scripture tells us that he did it ignorantly and in unbelief it was his initiative uh, to persecute to strange cities also the scripture tells us uh, he had, uh, the, the caused the and the, the persecution and the scattering of the church because of the the, per, uh, the the death of Stephen, the church was scattered, and Saul was the one who was really responsible. Uh, he went and he re inquired or requested authority of the high priest uh, that uh, he desired letters of him uh, to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way. Whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. The Damascus was 160 miles from Jerusalem. Uh, there, there were a lot of Jews in uh, Damascus, the, a city of, I uh, believe, there were about uh, 150,000 people. And uh, on one occasion, there was quite a number of uh, Jews that were killed in Damascus. Uh, and there would have been a lot of synagogues. And Saul's intention was to go uh, not only content to seek to wipe out the Christians around Jerusalem and those in his own regions, uh, but to pursue to other cities and even go as far as Damascus uh, because uh, there were believers there. And uh, if he found any of them, he would bring them bound uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, he would have uh, uh, traveled perhaps by foot uh, 160 miles such was his zeal uh, we, we find that uh, he, he was really out and out uh, he wasn't slowing down uh, for a midday break because as he journeyed about midday uh, when the sun was that at the height uh, in, in the blazing heat of uh, the, the, uh, the midday sun uh, he was traveling uh, with his companions uh, seeking to bring uh, any who would find whether they were men or women there was there was uh, a real venom in his heart uh, to to wipe out these people and as he journeyed he came near damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven the bible says brighter than the noonday sun now that the noonday sun uh, in Damascus would have been extremely bright uh, and yet there was a brightness above uh, the brightness of the uh, the noonday sun 
when the, the scripture tells us uh, how he went and he says he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him Saul Saul why persecutest thou me uh, it was on to tell us that uh, the men uh, that journeyed with him stood speechless hearing a voice but seeing no man uh, Saul heard and understood it's amazing how you can have a church full of people and uh, one person can hear God speaking to them uh, directly and and, and really uh, challenging and disturbing their hearts and others can sit in the same meeting and not be stirred or, or touched in the same way and so we find that here is Saul the men who were with him who traveled with him they heard a voice but they saw no man uh, and they uh, did not understand the message but the message came uh, very clearly very powerfully from uh, the Lord uh, to Saul as he travels Saul Saul why persecutest thou me uh, it is interesting to notice uh, that uh, Saul wasn't persecuting Jesus he was uh, persecuting the church uh, and yet Jesus uh, identifies himself so much with his own people that he sees that if someone is persecuting uh, a believer they're actually persecuting the Savior whenever you speak against a Christian uh, you're speaking against Christ whenever you uh, persecute uh, Christians uh, uh, you, you persecute Christ whenever you try to divide uh, the, the tragedy is that there have been those in churches and they've caused division and it's not causing division uh, to the church it's causing division to the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and whenever Jesus had challenged uh, Saul of Tarsus he says why persecutest thou me uh, uh, inasmuch as you've done it unto these the, the least of my brethren you have done it unto me and that should be a serious warning to people uh, as they uh, think about how they treat uh, the people of God and the work of God and the things of God uh, we know that this message was very personal uh, uh, was directed to him and uh, there was uh, uh, he was arrested by it that was Paul's and Saul's intention that he would go and arrest uh, people uh, who uh, believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God uh, he would go and arrest men and women and yet he was the one who was arrested by the the Word of God uh, came to him and uh, it illuminated his mind why persecuted thou me we, we know that uh, whenever you read the Old Testament and read of, of uh, Isaiah uh, whenever God gave to him Isaiah revelation he not only saw the glory of God it tells us I the year the King Uzziah died I saw also the Lord high and lifted up and the strain filled the temple and uh, we, we, we know that he saw the glory of God but he also saw his own sinfulness then said I woe is me uh, for I am undone I'm a mon man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips and mine eyes have seen the Lord and uh, we find that this is a uh, uh, so not only hearing the voice of God but being confronted with the deep rebellion and sin and wickedness of his own heart he that thought and con was convinced that he was doing the right thing now uh, was uh, was it was revealed to him that he was fighting against God he was persecuting the very son of God uh, and it was humbling he, he was brought down to the ground and so it is in the lives of men and women each one of us we may not have a, a dramatic experience of conversion like this of the Apostle Paul as he later became uh, but each one of us need to have that revelation of who Jesus is uh, that he is uh, the, the, the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the Father but by him he is the resurrection and the life uh, he that believeth in me shall never die jesus said and and he is the the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and the wonderful truth of the person of the lord jesus christ the one who was the just 
who gave his life for us, a ransom for, for sinners who died and that we might live. And we need to understand who he is. But hey, in understanding who Jesus is, we also need a revelation of our own sinfulness, that we have rebelled against the truth of God's word, that we have sinned against a holy God, that we are vile, wretched sinners, deserving of the wrath of God, and, and without anything to plea. There is none righteous, no, not one, not, uh, none that uh, seeketh after God. We've all gone astray. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we need to be humbled and brought to the place of submission before uh, God. We find here that Saul of Tarsus on his, on his mad career uh, to wipe out the church is faced with the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, hey, who art thou, Lord? And this voice that he recognized uh, as a voice from heaven, revealing to him uh, his, uh, him, himself and uh, he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the answer uh, came back, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It's hard for thee to kick against the prick. Who art thou, Lord? With all of his religion and with all of the training that he had, he had to acknowledge that he didn't know God. He didn't know. He knew that this voice was coming uh, from heaven but he did not know who it was and the answer came back i am jesus now the, the phrase i am would have been something that really uh, was familiar uh, with all of the, the the background that saul of tarsus would have had and the revelation of god to moses uh, in the, the burning bush i am that i am the eternal the all-sufficient the all uh, knowing uh, self-sustaining, uh, eternal, uh, omnipotent God, the God of glory. And uh, here we have, I am Jesus, the, the great I am, uh, connected and uh, linked to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the one that he hated with a vengeance, uh, the name that, that he couldn't stand, uh, and the name that he was seeking to wipe out any uh, mention of and yet here he is faced with the reality that the one that is speaking to him is the great I am uh, and he reveals himself in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, the one that he was convinced was justly crucified and certainly dead uh, any claim to the resurrection of Jesus Christ was something that he had totally rejected and he was at, utterly opposed to and yet he was hearing the very voice of God to his heart uh, from the one who had risen from the dead and uh, uh, we find here that uh, he, he was astonished and he was trembling not a bit wonder uh, when this revelation came to him uh, the Lord said it's hard for thee to kick against the bricks and uh, perhaps the, the, the reference there to the conviction that he was experiencing even since the death of Stephen. Uh, uh, hard for thee to kick against the bricks. Uh, the, the, the wisdom and the spirit with which Stephen had spoken uh, perhaps had really been like a goad uh, uh, really troubling him. Perhaps it was the, the, the uh, testimony, the open opening of the Old Testament scriptures in such a clear and in a powerful way as Stephen gave his defense. It may be, have been the way in which Stephen died, uh, the, 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 the spirit of Stephen that he saw, the glory that he saw in the face of Stephen. Perhaps it was all of these things that Jesus was referring to. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. Uh, the conviction that how, how can this man uh, have such peace? How can uh, this man have such clear understanding of the scripture and yet be wrong? Uh, and uh, perhaps it was even the prayer of uh, Stephen 
Lord, lay not the sin to their charge. Uh, the, the Bible tells us here that uh, it is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. And he trembling uh, uh, and astonished said, Lord, wilt thou, what wilt thou have me to do? Uh, there is this uh, realization, uh, encountering the living God, understanding that, that Jesus Christ is God and submitting and bowing before him in deep humility and brokenness and repentance realizing that uh, he had sinned against the god that he thought that he was serving and this revelation of the risen christ uh, says hi uh, arise and go into the city and it shall to be told thee what thou shalt do and this revelation we, we find in the life of stephen and it says, Behold, I, stand, I see the heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And, and Stephen knelt down and cried with a loud voice, saying, Lay not this son to their cha charge. And when he said this, he fell asleep. And, and now Saul is seeing what Stephen saw. He is seeing the glory of God. He, he, he said, uh, in, in the scriptures it tells us in first uh, uh, corinthians in chapter 15 and least of all he was seen of me also as one born out of due time for i am the least of the apostles and not meet to be called an apostle because i persecuted the church but by the grace of god i am what i am and his grace that was bestowed unto me was not in vain but i labored more abundantly than they all yet not i but the grace of god that was in me and so we find that Stephen saw the glory of God and he declared, I see uh, the heavens open. But now Saul is seen. Uh, the Lord appeared unto him and he heard the voice of God to his soul. Uh, and uh, so, uh, Stephen's prayer has been answered. Uh, Saul acknowledged that it was nothing to do with him. It was the grace of God. It was the mercy of God. It was the answer uh, to, to Stephen's prayer that this sin uh, would be forgiven uh, for in the life of Saul. And it says that uh, uh, he humbly submitted to the, the risen Christ. And the men that journeyed with him uh, stood speechless, hearing a, uh, uh, a voice, but uh, seeing no man. They didn't see anybody, but Saul did. And Saul's life, he rose from the earth and his eyes were open. When his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand. Here is this man, and he was intending to lead, by, uh, not by the hand, but by the back of the neck, as it were, uh, the Christians uh, out of Jerusalem. But he's led into, into uh, Damascus, led by the hand, uh, this man. And he was without sight for uh, three days, and he neither... Uh, ate nor drank and then we find uh, that God comes to Ananias one of the the leaders of the one of the synagogues in Damascus and it tells us in verse 10 and a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias uh, uh, to him he said in a vision Ananias and he said behold here am, uh, I am uh, and behold I am here Lord and the Lord said arise and go into a street that is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, uh, of one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. Now, Saul of Tarsus was a man who was brought up in prayer. He, he was steeped in prayer. Uh, he would have learned the, uh, the, the, the Hebrew prayers. Uh, he would have learned all of the uh, Pharisaical prayers, uh, the, the long prayers of the Pharisees. And yet there's something different now that that is is uh, significant behold he prayeth he's not just saying prayers but he is really in communion with god and uh, he has seen in a vision a man named ananias coming and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight and ananias said lord i have heard much uh, of many of this man how much evil he hath done unto the saints of jerusalem and that he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all the call upon his name uh, and but the lord said go thy way in for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the gentiles and kings and the children of israel for i have shown him 
how great things you must suffer for my name's sake. And so we find that uh, here's Ananias and, and, and the, 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 the warning messages has, has come through that this man Saul, he has created havoc in Jerusalem and now he has authority and he's coming. And, and there, there, there's bound to be a great fear in, in the hearts of the Christians. And when I, Ananias gets this message, I want you to go to Saul of Tarsus uh, and uh, he has seen a vision and, and you're to pray for him that his eyes might be open. You can imagine the, uh, the fear that is in Ananias' heart. And, and yet the Lord assures him, he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name. And so he went. Uh, and what courage it must have taken for Ananias to go in and uh, to address Saul of Tarsus. And uh, it tells us that he says, uh, Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hand upon him said brother Saul the Lord even Jesus hath appeared unto thee by the way and the comest has sent me that thou mightst receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales and he received his sight and arose and was baptized uh, here is God revealing uh, uh, the, the transformation he, he came into the city blind uh, blinded by rage first of all but after meeting Christ uh, he, his, his, he loses his physical sight perhaps he never fully uh, received we, we, we know that he had a thorn in the flesh and some believe perhaps that it was uh, that his eyesight uh, had never really recovered fully from uh, the, 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 the blinding light and that he saw on the road to Damascus he talked about see how much how large a letter I've written with my own hand and, and somehow would they would pluck out of their eyes and given to me to me so it may have been that he had still a problem with his eyes but God came to him and God revealed himself to him and he warned him of the things that he would suffer and yet he submitted himself and he was identified with the people of God here the transforming grace of God and that, that can come to a man even in the depth of his rebellion and, and uh, so reveal the beauty of the risen Christ in such a way that it breaks all of the barriers down and this man comes to see the truth and bows and gives his life and becomes the greatest uh, preacher of the gospel and we have so much to thank God for that he touched the life of Saul of Tarsus. And God can touch all of our lives by his grace. If you're not saved, uh, then uh, you can experience uh, the, uh, a real encounter with the living God. It doesn't need to be dramatic like the Apostle Paul. Uh, some we read of Lydia and uh, God opened her heart like the flower is open to the sun. God can open your heart to give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ so that you can be a vessel that God can use for his glory. I trust that God will encourage us as we think of uh, the transforming power of the gospel. Later on, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of God, of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth. He had experienced the power of the message from the risen Christ. Uh, he had understood uh, who Jesus was and he gave his life uh, to live for Christ and to serve him. And dear friend, that's the calling of God to each one of us, to give our lives uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. May God uh, help each one of us that we might do that for his name's sake. I'm going to bow for a moment in prayer. Our loving Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the opportunity of just uh, considering this great miracle in the life of Saul of Tarsus. And yet, Lord, we recognize so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Our circumstances might be different. Our conversion might be uh, totally different from the, the Apostle Paul. And yet, dear Father, we thank you as a miracle that only God can do in the heart and life to open our eyes for, uh, of the blind and to bring us from darkness into light, into the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, dear Father, that you will 
encourage us to believe for those who seem impossible that God can save and for those perhaps who uh, lack assurance that they might come to know and that uh, Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life uh, that if you come to him he will not cast them out and so loving father set your seal upon your word bless we pray for Jesus sake